Yeah, hello and welcome to another section with me. I go by the name Sec Fortress. And if you have really been following me, um, my last topic was brute forcing web panels with DVW. And I hope you learned something from uh, my last video. Well, if you learned something, make sure to click the subscribe button, like this video, and turn on the bell icon to get notifications on upcoming video like this one. So basically, today we are going to be talking about uh, the command injection in DVW. Um, in my last video, I explained about DVW, which is the vulnerable web app. I explained what it is and how uh, it actually um, works and how it makes you um, from a total net to um, a security professional. I mean, a web app security professional. So if you are really need new into um, bug hunting, you should really check out my last video and um, you should actually know the basics before you continue. So, um, like I said, today we'll be talking about command ejection, also known as RCE, which is remote code execution, and we will still be using the DVW. Like, this is a DVW um, walkthrough, so we basically are going to be using the DVW um, web app. So, I'm just going to open up my browser. And once that is done, I can navigate to um, the, night, the IP address being configured for my DVW and here it is. I'm just going to zoom in for us to see. And once that is done, I'll just put this here so we can have um, a glance through. Let me just take that small. So now we are moving on to the command injection tab which is right over here. I'm just going to click that and now we have command ejection now um, basically what this vulnerability about is about is like it's actually there are some um, website that al allow you to perform a pinch scan or to run basics um, Linux command or MS DOS command like the pinch or maybe a um, um, actually, there are other commands than pinch that you can actually run, but this one basically focus uh, on pinging an IP address. You can do that with your terminal do, which I could just pinch 127.0.0.1, and then I manually pinch scan is just you know if a host is actually up and running, like if a host is available on the website. I want to seven dot zero dot zero dot zero dot zero dot one is my local host which is available here so um i'm just gonna stop this and go back to the tutorial so pinging a device is the with what um i just perform on my terminal i can also perform it on this web app all i just need to do is to also type in the ip address okay dot one and click enter and we should see that it's actually can it's actually um, returned um, back a um, response to us. We gave it a request and it returned back a response to us. And we can see the pinch static that four packets were transmitted, four packets were received, zero percent packets were lost, and it was the time was um, 368 milliseconds. That is not what we are actually doing for this tutorial. What we are actually doing is to run commands that are actually not meant to be um, executed by this web application so i'm just going to set this to low let me set my dvw okay it's in low already so i'm going to be doing low medium and i am going to be showing us the differences and why if you have uh, a, a web application like this you should actually make sure you implement um the OWASP um security to your web application so um basically i could actually just run okay let me just use a random 
IP address of 0 0.0.1. I'm not going to use that again. I could actually use ampersand since uh, um, the vulnerability have set our web application to a very low standard of security. So actually, I could just do and and ampersand twice, then run ls, and we will see. We will notice an additional information. It is going to pass an additional information that what than what it literally gave us before. Okay, I think the IP address I actually passed through was um um. Okay, so that's four. Oh, it's it's correct. It is correct. Okay, I guess. I literally did not let me just try one to seven dot zero dot zero dot one then pass and pass on twice then ls it's meant to give us extra information I guess yes so we can see that we got extra information I don't know why that didn't work for one seven two dot zero dot zero dot one but when I tried it with my localhost my localhost IP address is one two seven you can see extra information like app, index.php, and source. Next thing to actually do is we can instead of using the and ampersand twice, we can also use uh, a semicolon. I'm just going to show you that right away, and I'm just going to be fast with this one because we are still going to perform uh, a reverse shell. And if that is not possible in this video, I'll be dropping a part two of um command injection so literally let's just see what we can actually do for today so we can actually use a semicolon then cls oh i think without get executed wow it's got executed so we can see that uh it's actually got executed now the next thing to actually do is to actually change the security let's try changing the security to medium and see what is going to happen to submit now i'm going to command injection i'm back here again and then let's try what the command we actually did last let's do it i think we have the command in the drop down list here and let's try submitting it and see if it is going to give us an output no output literally no output now you can see that <laughs> when I try to uh, perform a pin scan and add an additional information, it didn't provide any output for us. Now let's try running the um, other um, semicolon thing. We just want to seven dot zero dot zero dot one, <laughs> and then the semicolon, and then ls. Let's try this and see. Oh oh, one two seven. I'm going to try this again and ls still no output i guess let me just reboot still no output so basically let's try something you see that this command basically has a space within it let's try removing the spaces and see if anything is going to happen nothing literally happened nothing uh okay let's try our other command which is this and try again still nothing happened <laughs> but we have one more last command yeah one more last command let's try using the uh the pipe we call it pipe let's try piping a command um after including our pinch our the ip address we actually want to pinch now um piping in linux is something that um you're actually telling your system that once you have run this command please immediately don't print that output pipe that output to the next command and after i mean send that output to the next command and after sending the output to the next command give me the output if you don't understand the concept about this, let me just show you. So now I'll just do 127.0.0.1. And I'm going to add the pipe command and put in ls. Let's see. <laughs> now basically, it did not even print the pinch scan for me. It just gave me 
uh, uh, the, it just print out the next command. I mean, we basically typed in one two seven and we piped in ls. So basically, this is a pipe keyword. This small string you're actually seeing here is a pipe, and we said pinch one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one and then send the output to ls. ls means list out the um, content of the database. And instead of it showing us the pinch scan, it actually brought out the content of the database. Wow, that is incredible. Now, the purpose of this video is to actually view content. I mean, to actually view content. The next thing, we are just going to have to raise the security level. And we are just going to take it to I this time. <laughs> and let's see what we can actually do. Uh, is that in I let me just confirm okay it's I now I'm just going to have to type in that same command I actually did then and then submit it and then no output why it worked for medium it is meant to actually work for and um high security what is actually going on well what is going on is that there is a space in between um one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one then we piped in ls now this in this one is um the database is already case sensitive that once it notices a space between this um it should actually render or sanitize the um output and it shouldn't print out an output for us so now let's just try removing the spaces and let's see what's going to happen okay whoa we got <laughs> <laughs> we literally got an output and we can see the output right here so basically what this is trying to what this is trying to implement is that anytime we are actually testing um web application we should always try to include spaces and also try to remove spaces while testing that web application this is a result to improper sanitization of um, inputs in web applications. And I hope you learned um, a lesson from this and I hope you correct it if you have this type of web application. So now let's try getting a reverse shell. I mean, um, let's try RC, which is remote code execution. I'm just going to run this LS since I actually want to. Um, um okay let's put myself as a black attacker with the marks and the hoodie and <laughs> you know all those qualities of a black attacker so now let's try to um perform remote code execution because i cannot just be uh moving from one direction to another using the database i actually have to pipe it to my command line so what i'm just going to do here is i'm going to actually start up a netcat um process I'm just going to zoom in this in i'll just do nc dash nvlp one two three four port one two three four and once that is done our server our netcat server is listing on any port of one two three four and then i can actually do this i don't literally need to actually um do ls again because i'm not actually trying to um ls to anywhere <laughs> so actually i have the command here already and this is the command which is nc which literally means netcat and then i have our local host here which is the ip address of the server that i started this netcat process from and then i have the port which is port 1234 then i have the uh, parameter which is i want it to be able to i mean to be able to give um um privileges to my um netcat shield I'll just do nc dash dash l and we can see okay dash h okay let me just do dash h and we can see here um i'm just going to zoom that in we can actually see here which is dash e program to execute after connect and we can see that it's a dangerous parameter so now i literally can just quit this and then click submit then i should have gotten a response here and we can see here it says connect to 127.0.0 from unknown 127 port 51652 
Now we can actually run command. We can even see the pin scan. <laughs> the pin scan, which actually, uh, which was actually one two seven dot zero dot zero the IP dot zero dot zero dot one. The IP address we actually pinging. Now I can actually run command ls. Okay, okay. I guess something is actually going on. Okay, let's actually try to start that again. I'm just going to see. Oh, we can see every command I actually run here. So, um, I guess I just have to be more. Um, being bash submit. Let me see. Ls still nothing. So um, I'm just going to quit this and then run this again, and then try to do one two seven dot zero dot zero. This time I am literally okay. Um, I think I got the wrong IP address. Literally, I actually wrote the wrong IP address. It was going to be one nine two dot one six eight dot 43.105 which is the ip address um located here sorry about that i mean i'm trying this on my local host if i was actually trying this um on the one on the wide wide area network i will actually input my ip address here and if i try to run if config we can actually see my local ip address here which is 192.168.43.105 and when i click submit i should be able to type in commands now okay um i don't know why this is literally going on but i guess maybe i can't run commands on the um on the remote server why because i have understand i've understood why this is happening because initially uh the um database has been set to i security so the only thing i can do literally here is i can literally view content but i cannot run commands i can view content but i cannot run commands so that is why it's always always um always good to actually set um policies and security implementations and um, proper sanitization proper handling of inputs in um your web applications now even if we set the security to um impossible which is what i guess everybody should be using i mean literally no command is going to work whether there is a space you enter an invalid ip or whether there is no space actually it is not going to work nothing is going to work like nothing is going to work so that is why it is always uh good to um always put in proper simple uh, proper security implementation in your web application as a developer well um we have come to the end of this video and i hope you learned something amazing from this video i hope you got um, whatever point i'm trying to pass to you and please make sure you subscribe, like, and as I said, click the bell icon to get notification about this video. And if maybe you don't like my video for any reason, I state again. Um, you're just gonna tell me the reason why. You can send me an email and tell me what you don't like about my video, literally. Well, thank you for watching, and I really appreciate. See you in my next video. Precious. Precious.